Hey Slappers, today I'm going to show you how to enforce multi-factor authentication only from networks outside of your local area net. So right now I have two virtual machines running, a server and a client, um, and we see a couple IP addresses for them. And what I'm going to do is show you how to set up this, uh, this authentication scheme so that you no longer have to enter MFA if you're logging in from a trusted local network. This should make your lives much easier. So we're logging into the server here. And the first thing we're going to do is just demonstrate SSHing in from the client to the server. We'll be allowed basic password authentication. There will be no multi-factor involved no specific rules about where we're connecting from. And you can see we enter our password and we're granted access, as simple as that. So on the server to, to set up uh, the authentication scheme we want, we're going to first run an apt update uh, or pseudo apt update uh, as is best practice. And then we're gonna install libpam Google Authenticator. This is the PAM module for using MFA with the Google Authenticator app. After that, we're gonna go into our PAM module configuration for SSH, and we're gonna add a line that calls that PAM module for Google Authenticator whenever we are logging in through SSH. Um, so it's this line right here. Then we're gonna tell SSH, hey, you should ask for an MFA token when someone's logging in. So we need to go into the sshd underscore config file and change challenge response auth authentication from no to yes. It's that simple. And then we save that file and everything is configured server side for us to be accepted with MFA login credentials when we connect. Um, so we restart the SSH server for those config changes to take effect. And then that's all set. The next important thing we need to do is log in as one of the users and actually set up um, MFA tokens for that user. So we log in as them and we run Google Dash Authenticator. Um, we answer yes to all the questions to generate time-based tokens and then we get this QR code, um, which is what you're gonna scan from your mobile device after you've downloaded the Google Authenticator app. After you scan the QR code with it, um, it automatically loads in that server into your list of, uh, of hosts under the host name of whatever server you're adding it to. And then you'll get uh, time-based one-time pins generated to the app. So here I got my first pin, I entered it, and I was able to confirm registration uh, for MFA on this server. You can answer yes to the rest of these questions or read through them and answer to uh, the best of your ability what your desired configuration is. So now that we have that set up for our user, Jake, we can SSH in from the client and we'll see that it now prompts us for a verification code after the password. That verification code is the one-time pin that shows up on our mobile app. And once we enter that in, you can see we are granted access. Okay, but now the purpose of this video is to show you how to enforce MFA only for hosts that are external to your local network so that it's easier for you to access your network when you're working from you know your workplace or your home base or whatever it may be and now to enforce this only for people externally we're going to go back into the pam.d slash sshd config file and we're going to just add one more line right before the the pam google authenticator line that we added in the previous step um, so I'm just going to change the comment here to reflect that this is MFA for non-LAN connections only. And then we are going to add a line that calls the PAM access module. And what that module is going to do is going to um, tell the authentication stack whether uh, a local host is good, whether a host connected is, is local or not. And if they are, it's going to allow it to skip the MFA step. 
Um, if you guys want a video specifically going over all the details of how PAM modules work, um, how to understand the authentication stack, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to go into detail about that. Um, so next we have to uh, edit the basic access config file, which is etsy slash security slash access.com. Um, here we're gonna add two roles. One is allow all users from the subnet, the local subnet, which in my case is 10.207.237. Um, and you can express, express this inside your notation or individual IP addresses or whatever. The next rule is deny all users from all addresses. Um, so it only matches the first uh, rule that uh, succeeds. So we're telling the, this PAM module that anytime someone accesses it from a local uh, area network host, we are going to allow them and then it will skip the MFA. And you can see on my client side that we are in that 10.207.237 area, uh, local area network. And we can then connect directly to our server without going through MFA. If we did the same exact thing through an external network, um, let's say another local area subnet that we didn't specify in our in our access.com file, such as 192.168, so on, it would not allow us to bypass that step. Or if we connected through a public IP um, and not through the, the LAN IP or private IP, then we would also have to go through the verification code step again. Um, so this makes it a lot easier to manage your, your servers, your workstations, all of your infrastructure when you're within a trusted network um, and to keep those more rigid security policies uh, for people who may be trying to connect outside of the network or externally. So I hope this video helps you. Again, if you're interested in PAM modules, let me know below. Love to do a video on that for you um, because it is definitely a topic a lot of people struggle with. Um, so that's all for today, Slappers. Thanks a lot. Have a great Christmas.